Hey guys, and welcome to a new Cozy Draw With Me video. I'm gonna show you how I approach a simple female portrait from sketch to completed illustration using Procreate for iPad. This won't be every illustrator's way of doing things, but I'm sharing with you the process that works for me and little tricks that I've picked up over the last two years. So grab a hot drink, get cozy, and let's draw together. All of my drawings start the same, and that's by finding reference photos for inspiration. I got all of these images from Pinterest and I imported them to an app called VizRef which allows you to create custom mood boards. I like to use the split screen function with Procreate so that I can always refer to my mood board when I'm sketching. So this is the rough sketch that I created based on the inspiration images. I love this girl's pose and the way the sky is holding the leaf as a shelter from the rain is super cute. It actually gave me the idea to draw a spring inspired fairy. I don't need these references anymore though so I'm just gonna drag them away. For the rough sketch, I always start by mapping out the pose and the general shapes loosely with a big textured brush. One thing that's important at this stage is to determine the line of action, which is shown in red, as this will give some life to the pose. Next, I'm ready to move on to the line art. I'll be keeping the line art visible in the finished piece, so I want to make sure that it looks really good. I start by reducing the opacity of the sketch layer and create a new layer on top. For this illustration, I'm going to use the Ink Bleed brush, which is actually a Procreate default brush. I have adjusted the brush properties slightly to make it better for me, and if you're interested in having the same settings, I do have a brush pack download available on my Patreon page. I like to begin with the facial features and work outwards from there. For this particular art style, I tried to make all of my lines smooth and precise. When I drew the hands for this character, I actually took a reference photo of myself holding onto an imaginary leaf so that I could get the fingers right. Hands are really difficult to draw, so there's really no shame in using your own hands as a guide. If I ever feel like something is off with the proportions, I go to the adjustments menu and use the liquify tool to push around some of the shapes until I'm happy with it. For the hair, I wanted to go for a loose, effortlessly beautiful look. I start by drawing the big shapes first and add smaller defining lines to the curls afterwards to create some texture and flow. You'll see that I often redraw the curls that I'm not satisfied with, so this step can take a while. It's always worth it though, because the hair is one of the main centerpieces in this illustration. Once the line art is done, I merge all the layers together and duplicate. I usually like to add a super soft blur effect to my line art, and I do this by duplicating the merged layers and adding a slight Gaussian blur effect to the bottom layer. Then I decrease the opacity until I'm happy with it. And this is the final line art. Now we're ready to move on to adding the flat colors. This is by far the most satisfying step for me. I begin by setting the background color to a light beige. It's important to choose the background color first so that you can see how the rest of the colors will interact with it. To add the flat colors, I like to use the Studio Pen brush, which is another Procreate default brush that I have made some small adjustments to. There's really no special techniques here, I'm simply just filling in all of the shapes on different layers. I like to play around with the colors and you'll see that I change up the color of her top a few times. When I'm coloring the lips, since the top lip is part of the line art, I have to go to the line art layer and turn on alpha lock, which is a setting that means I can only color within those lines. Then I simply color over the black line art in pink. In the end, I decided to go back to the green top because it felt more earthy and of course I also wanted to add in some fairy wings. And that's all for the flat colors. Next, I want to add all the details that are going to make this girl pop. So. Starting with the eyes, I'm creating a clipping mask layer over the layer of the eye color and setting the blend mode to overlay. I select the Bonobo chalk brush, which is yet another Procreate default brush, and I use a pale green color to create a lighter textured gradient at the bottom of the iris. Then I effectively do the opposite by creating a new clipping mask layer set to multiply blend mode, this time using a blue color to create a darker gradient beneath the eyelashes. Now I want to add some blush. I begin by choosing a color that is slightly more pink and saturated than the skin. Then I create a clipping mask over the skin layer and use a soft brush to add some subtle blush to the cheeks, ears, forehead, shoulders, elbows, and hands. Basically anywhere that the skin is thinner and the blood would rush to. I also like to erase a small shape in the blush where the nose is to show that it's not flat and it will be slightly in the light. Then I am going to add some warm shadows to her skin. To do this, I create a new clipping mask layer set to multiply and select the ink bleed brush again. 
Using a light pink color, I add some eyeshadow to her upper and lower eyelids and a shadow to the bottom of her nose. I'm imagining that the light is coming from the top left corner of the canvas, so I try to keep that in mind when I'm adding shadows to her neck, face, arms, chest and hands. As you can see, these small details are already bringing a lot more life to this character. Now it's time for the details in the hair. This next part is just a personal touch because I like the effect it creates. I start by making another clipping mask and select the same blue color that I use for the wings. Then I use a soft brush to create a light blue gradient in the innermost parts of the character's hair and I erase any parts of the gradient that bleed over onto the bangs. This step isn't really necessary but it adds a nice subtle glow to frame her face. To add some shadows, I create a new layer set to multiply and choose a deep blue color. Like earlier, I'm using the ink bleed brush. I'm trying not to overdo it with the shadows. I used to add a lot of shadows until I realized that I preferred a less is more look in my artwork. Instead, I'm trying to focus more on contrast and the flow of her hair strands. I follow a similar approach with the hair highlights. Here, I create a new layer set to overlay and choose a light yellow color. Sometimes I like to create double lines to add more texture, but again, I'm trying not to overwork it and I want to stick to shapes that will add to the flowy effect. For this particular character, I wanted the highlights to be really subtle, so I also decreased the opacity a little bit. As a final touch, I create a new layer set to the add blend mode with a really, really low opacity. Using the studio pen brush, I add some big blobs to the top of her hair to make it look smooth and shiny. With the hair complete, it's time to wrap up the final details, including her clothes, wings, and the plant. To add some texture to her clothing, I'm using the Procreate default Tarkine brush. Then I'm adding some more defined shadows using the ink bleed brush again. I want to add some highlights to her skin and I do this by creating a new layer above everything set to the overlay blend mode. Using a light yellow color, I add highlights to her face, body and clothes. Like earlier when I was drawing the shadows, I'm keeping in mind that the light is coming from the left hand side. I want it to be subtle so I also decrease the opacity slightly. For the fairy wings, I'm creating a pattern based on insect wings to make them a little bit more interesting. Because I want both wings to be symmetrical, I duplicate the layer, flip it and drag it across to the other side. I also do the same thing with the bottom too. I then go in and add a darker gradient at the base of the wings and a lighter gradient on the outer edges to make them appear softer. And now the final element to render is the plant. I begin by adding a warm gradient to the base of the leaf to give the impression of transparency, using an overlay layer and bonobo chalk brush. Then I add some shadows to the folds of the leaf and some subtle highlight blobs to the parts that would be in the light. After that, I add some more shadows to the veins of the plant for some contrast, followed by some shadows on the stalk. I've probably said this a million times already in this video, but as always, the shadows were created on multiply layers using a pale blue color with the ink bleed brush. Finally, I add some subtle highlights to the plant on an overlay layer using a pale yellow color. And the rendering process is almost done. Before I finish, I'm going to change the color of the line art. So, like earlier, I make sure that the line art layer is set to alpha lock and draw over the line art with new colors that match better with the colors of the shapes beneath it. For example, on the skin, I use a warm dark red and for the plant, I'm coloring the lines dark green. I'm only changing the color of the line art within the shape and leaving the main outline black for some contrast. Because of these changes, I also have to redo the Gaussian blur effect that I did earlier to make sure that the colors match. Once this is done, I copy everything onto one layer and do some color adjustments. I do this by going to the adjustments menu and hitting curves. I usually increase the red midtones and play around with gamma to increase the contrast. For some finishing touches, I add some stars and a little bit of sparkle in her eyes. And this is the completed character. If I want to share it on social media, I just export the file as PNG and airdrop it to my phone. I wasn't too sure how this character would turn out before I started filming, but I'm actually pretty happy with it. The track time for this illustration was just over seven hours. And that's it for this draw with me video. If you liked it, please consider subscribing. It really does help me out. And if you want to see more tutorials, podcasts, and updates, you can also find me on Patreon. The link is in the description. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you all have a lovely week. Bye.